Hominini is a taxonomic tribe of primates comprised of all apes more closely related to chimpanzees, humans, or both than any other apes. In more recent years, however, the term hominin has come to mean just all apes more closely related to humans than any other apes. So that's the way we'll use the term in this video today. Remember that our closest relative is the chimp with whom we share approximately 95% of our DNA, and our most recent common ancestor with chimps lived between 7 and 5 million years ago. This fact can be verified by both genetic and paleontological data, and it is the latter that we will investigate here. Despite creationists constantly exclaiming that there are no transitional fossils anywhere, the hominin lineage alone is filled with a good many. For more examples of transitional fossils and other lineages, see my video pointing to common ancestry. Interestingly, while there are a plethora of fossils leading to humans, there has been only one discovery of a chimp fossil, which was discovered in 2005. To quote Richard Dawkins in his book, The Greatest Show on Earth, quote, If anything, it is the chimps, not humans, who today have a right to complain of missing links, close quote. The reason for this is likely that chimps lived in places where fossilization was poor. The ancestors of chimps remained in the African tropical rainforests, while human ancestors moved to the forests and tree savannas. Around the human-chimp split, though, a number of fossils have been found. The oldest is the African ape Sahelanthropus, dating to about 7 million years ago. This species has cranial characteristics of both chimps and australopithecines, that is, its cranial capacity is between 320 and 380 cubic centimeters. So it might be representative of the common ancestor between them, or a hominin. It is also unknown whether Sahelanthropus was bipedal, or having the ability to walk on two feet, so more fossil evidence is needed to answer these questions. Next, Ororin is dated from 6.1 to 5.7 million years ago, and its femurs display signs of bipedality. However, its thumbs indicate that it was a tree climber as well. The femurs also have characteristics intermediate between Miocene apes and later hominins. Next, its canine teeth resemble those of Miocene apes or female chimps, but are smaller, which makes sense given that the jaw size of hominins has trended downwards over time. And, Ororin has thickened enamel on its molars, which has caused some researchers to put it at the base of the hominin tree. Ororin has some oddities though, for example, its cheek teeth are more like ours than Australopithecines. Despite this, researchers generally agree that we are descended from Australopithecines and will return to these guys shortly. Likely the cheek teeth are a homoplasy, or a convergently evolved feature, rather than an ancestrally derived trait. Its cranial capacity hasn't been measured because it has been so poorly preserved. The third African ape is Artipithecus that lived from 5.6 to 4.4 million years ago and is very likely bipedal, as shown by its tibia. However, the species has a grasping foot like that of all other apes, but unlike other hominins. Aside from that, Artipithecus has a number of both advanced and primitive traits. The molars had not expanded like those of Australopithecines, the enamel was more like that of chimps, and the humerus had a mix of ancestral and derived characteristics. On the other hand, the ulna resembles that of hominins, the canines are less projecting than those of non-hominins, and the molar root pattern is that of hominins. Its cranial capacity ranged from 300 to 350 cubic centimeters. That finishes off the pre-Australopithecine hominins, and our ancestors, the Australopithecines, first appeared around 4.5 million years ago, going extinct around 1.977 million years ago. The Australopithecines were a very diverse bunch, with the earliest being Australopithecus anamensis, who lived about 4 million years ago. Australopithecus anamensis is definitely bipedal by the shape of its tibia, meaning that all later hominins were definitely bipedal, and its teeth had the thickened enamel like that of later hominins. Later species of Australopithecus included Afarensis, Africanus, Boisei, Garhi, and Sediba. Next, Australopithecus afarensis has even more hominin traits, including its smaller canines, enlarged molars and premolars, the molars were expanding, its pelvis looked much more like ours than earlier primates, and it has a cranial capacity of 380 to 430 cubic centimeters. On the other hand, its canines were still larger than our own, its body was indicative of a facultative tree climber, and its shoulders were oriented like those of modern non-human apes. In other words, it possesses characteristics of both hominins and non-hominins. 
The earliest of these ever discovered was named Lucy in 1974 by Donald Johansson, and to anyone who thinks Lucy was just a chimp, that belief is diagnostic of a total disconnect from anthropological data. Third, Australopithecus garhi has been regarded by some paleoanthropologists as a direct descendant of Australopithecus afarensis and a possible direct ancestor of Homo. It has more hominin features, such as more thickened enamel, having a tooth arrangement more like that of later hominins, and having a cranial capacity of 450 cubic centimeters. Fourth, Australopithecus africanus had a tooth arrangement even more similar to later hominins and had a larger cranial capacity, ranging from 400 to 500 cubic centimeters. Some anthropologists regard Australopithecus africanus as an ancestor of the robust Australopithecines, which belonged to one genus called Paranthropus that existed from about 2.7 to 1.2 million years ago. The robust Australopithecines had heavier cranial anatomy, including gorilla-like sagittal crests, representing a side branch in the hominin lineage. Our ancestral Australopithecines were called gracile, as opposed to robust. The earliest Homo appeared about 2.8 million years ago, which is represented by a fossil jaw named LD350-1. The dental pattern and age of the jaw puts it as a transition between the earlier Australopithecines and the later Homo habilis, who is the most primitive human species found. Homo habilis is dated from 2.1 to 1.5 million years ago and displays a cranial capacity from 550 to 687 cubic centimeters. This species has features of Australopithecines like its very long arm bones and later hominins like its height, and that has made it difficult in the past to classify. Anthropologists wondered if it was a very advanced Australopithecine or a very primitive Homo. Following that, Homo erectus, living from 1.9 million years ago to 143,000 years ago, and having a cranial capacity from 850 to 1100 cubic centimeters, was so named not because it's a facultative biped, but because it's fully bipedal. Now, a note on tool usage in hominins. The first tool makers were Australopithecines around 3 million years ago, which became the Aldowan tool industry about 2.6 million years ago. Acheulean tools were created by Homo habilis around 1.8 million years ago, which included the first usage of the wedge, and ended around 100,000 years ago. Lastly, the Mousterian tools were made of flint and were used by Neanderthals from 160,000 to 40,000 years ago. Back to Homo erectus. They were the first hominins to escape Africa, and after doing so, they migrated everywhere from the Middle East to China and down to Indonesia. From Homo erectus, Homo heidelbergensis developed, living from 600,000 to 200,000 years ago, and having a cranial capacity of 1,250 cubic centimeters. From there, Neanderthals, Denisovans, and the ancestors of modern humans evolved. There was interbreeding among these three subspecies of Homo sapiens, resulting in humans of European descent having some Neanderthal DNA, and humans of Southeast Asian descent having some Denisovan DNA. There is even evidence of another undescribed subspecies of Homo sapiens that interbred with the Melanesians. So, that sums up human evolution. We share a common ancestor with all other living primates, evolving from a common ancestor with chimps that lived about 6 million years ago. A series of ancestral forms link our ancestors with that common ancestor, and an Australopithecine lineage led to our own genus, Homo. From there, our genus diversified, eventually giving rise to us. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.